Resident Evil Village is probably one of my favorite Resident Evil games of all time. It's definitely at least in the top five for me personally. In this video, we are going for the platinum trophy in Resident Evil Village and completing all the DLC, which is actually quite simple. Some consider Village to be one of the harder Resident Evil games to complete because of a knife only playthrough that's required and the dreaded mercenaries extra game mode. Is it really that hard though? We'll find out later in the video. For now though, it's time for step one, which is to play the game while collecting all the collectibles and getting as many miscellaneous trophies as we can along the way. Another big thing I need to make sure of is to save as much in-game money as possible in order to make later trophies easier to get, which basically means I'm only going to buy inventory space from the in-game shop and not get any upgrades for my guns. Now, normally I'd start off on the hardest difficulty, but there's actually an even harder difficulty that we'll unlock later, so there's no point in doing that now. So for now, we're just playing on standard. We start off with Mia, our wife, reading our little baby Rose a really creepy bedtime story. Like seriously, who reads this stuff to a baby? After the story, Rose is all tuckered out, so we decide to take her to her room and put her to sleep in her crib. Once in her room, I notice a little ball on the floor, and I figured with the World Cup going on, I might as well practice my soccer skills. Ronaldo, he shoots. He scores! Goal! After finally putting Rose to sleep, it's time to kick back and drink some wine with our wife that we worked so hard rescuing in the last game. I don't even get to sip my wine before Mia is shot and killed violently, I might add, by none other than Chris Redfield. We are dragged out of the house by Chris and his friends, and we awake later on in the snow from a car crash that we were seemingly in. Oh man. Now the real game begins. We make our way through the snow and eventually come across a beautiful view of a castle, which will be our new hell for the next couple of hours. After making our way through this abandoned village, we get into our first combat encounter with a strange werewolf beast. After killing the beast, I needed to heal, so I craft my first healing item for a trophy. Crafter. We eventually come to a small neighborhood where some werewolves are chilling on a rooftop. I tell them I want no trouble and make my way past them, when all of a sudden they attack me anyways. Rude. Now I need to survive for as long as I can against a giant wave of super pissed off werewolves. Back! Back you fools! Oh, I hear a big boy. I'm going down. I'm out of here. Oh my god, they're smashing up the... They're smashing up the joint. That's scary sounding. That's scary sounding. That's scary sounding. Ah! <laughs> Run! Where's my shotgun? Where's my shotgun? Where's my shotgun? King of the castle. King of the castle. Oh, there's... Oh my god! Ah! My neck! Oh my god, I'm out of here. Oh my god, I'm out of here. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Survive, even for the love of god. You only have two bullets. Eventually, the werewolves get distracted and leave me alone for now. I'm not liking this. Survive the lichen attack. We survived. Barely, but we did it. We did it. Soon after, we meet up with a creepy old lady who lets us know that Rose is somewhere in the castle. With this information, we make our way there. Oh look, it's a shootable collectible. Cynic! While trying to get to the castle, we are ambushed by Mother Miranda and her four lackeys. After escaping a ton of werewolves and some death traps. Wait, do those freaks have Rose? We eventually make it into the castle, but we are now ambushed by Lady D and her three witch daughters. Lady D is a giant woman who's also kind of like a vampire, which she shows off by sucking some of my blood. Without my permission, by the way. After making fun of me for a bit, they leave me hanging, literally, all by myself. I pull myself down and it was now time to explore the castle. Now the goal of this area is to explore and kill the three witch sisters while collecting four masks so that I could open the main door out of the castle. While I was exploring, I unlocked a ton of trophies in this area. After killing the first witch, come on, lady. Oh, I gotta reload. I gotta reload, time out, time out, time out, time out, pause, pause. Yeah. First one down. 
I got three trophies. One for equipping a weapon part for the first time. Gunsmith. Equip a gun with a customizable part. One for lock picking for the first time. Wait, pick a lock? Is there a trophy for lock picking? I don't remember. Petty Thief. There is. It's not Master of Unlocking? Man. And another for buying my first item in the in-game store. Patron. But to think. Purchase something from the Duke in the you story. I then come across Lady D having a phone call with Mother Miranda and learn that Rose isn't here. So now I really need to leave. After a quick tussle with Lady D, which I barely survive. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh my God. She just sliced the crap out of me. Lady, leave me alone. I'm dead. I'm so dead. I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh my god! You psycho! Will get you I explore the castle, kill the second witch. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I just want you to die. Get some fresh air, huh? I don't want to die. Too late. You're dead. And get a trophy for shooting out all the windows in the castle. Hooligan. Break every breakable window. I really am a menace just going around breaking the windows in this very expensive castle. And I'm solving puzzles? Psh, dude, what am I, like the main character? Holy crap. Now, searching for the third mask, I find myself on the rooftop. And here is a perfect opportunity to get a trophy for sniping an enemy far away. There is. Trick shot. What exactly is it? Defeat an enemy from long range with the sniper rifle. There we go. While exploring, I found a little ball that you can use on a moving puzzle in the shop, which awards you a treasure and a trophy. Go, my ball friend. Okay, all right, all right, this is the part right here. This is it. Yes, okay, uh-huh, yep. There we go, get the ball rolling. I eventually kill the third and final witch. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, you can slash stuff. You're done. Get all the masks, put them in their corresponding statues, and escape out the front door of the castle. Before I can escape, though, Lady D attacks us, and she is now this giant mutated dragon thing. This is our very first big boss fight of the game. You crazy lady! Okay, she's flying. Now it's time to snipe. There we go. <laughs> Let's bring out the shotgun. Yeah, you like shotguns? Oh. Don't hurt me. <laughs> Don't hurt me. Yes. Oh, that's some good damage. Oh. Oh, that's some good Good damage right there. You die. Yes. Yes. That sucks. <laughs> You're the one who's cursed. Hey, there's the one-liner. Hey, it was all right. We can work on Ethan. We can work on that, but at least you're trying. At least you're trying. With Lady D officially dead, we pick up this weird jar of goo and make our way back to the village. Along the way, I get a trophy for hunting an animal. And before I can make it back into the village, I get into a fight with a werewolf, which gives me another trophy for using a counterattack. I then have a conversation with the Duke, who informs me that the jar of goo I collected is actually one-fourth of Rose, and that the other three lords have the other parts of her. In order to save Rose, I need to collect all of her parts. I repair a broken treasure item, kill three enemies with one attack, 
and make my way to the next lord, which is in a very creepy house on a hill. I make my way through the house, which is filled with puzzles and a giant creepy baby fetus thing. Oh. You suck, you stupid baby. I'm out of here. And I fight the next boss, which is actually really easy. You just run around and you find this doll three times and stab it in the head. That's who was behind all this. Got no strings. That's for completing this, uh, <laughs> this house. This is easily the scariest part of the game for me. It's really quick, but it's, oh God. Every time I have to play this part. Let's collect another piece of rose, the legs. And we're done with the spot. It was now time to make our way to the third Lord. This dude's name is Mordo, and he's like this weird fish man. We steal the third piece of rose from him and make our way outside, but he turns into this giant fish creature. Now the goal of this area is to drain the water so we can fight him. Before I do that though, I get a trophy for opening up all the outhouses in the game. Yes, this is a trophy for some reason. Yeah, it is. When you gotta go. And then make my way through this long sequence where I'm dodging this giant fish while powering up some windmills in the area. Eventually, we drain the water and it was time for another boss fight. Alright. Let's do it. Oh my god, he is like kicking my ass. Die, die, die. Get out of here, fish brain! Alright, I gotta go. Alright, we gotta sit right here. He's gonna shoot some goo at me. Ew, dude. Every Californian right now is going, We needed this. We needed this. <laughs> Every Californian, when it rains, we needed this. Okay, I'm gonna equip this mine. We're just gonna place that right there. And you can come at me. Come at me all you want. Come on. Come on. Come to the mine. Place that one right there. Place that one right there. There we go. A little handgun bullets in ya. How you like that? You liking that? <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Oh, he's gonna go. Oh god, he's gonna go. He's gonna go. Place that right there. Give him a little shotgun action. How you like that? How do you like that? Fish out of water. <laughs> You're done. With old fish boy out of the way, all we needed to do was defeat the last lord and then hopefully we can save Rose. The last lord is Heisenberg and in order to get to him, we need to go deep into the werewolf's den. On my way there, I get a trophy for shooting five flying crows. And then I had to try and knock a flaming arrow out of the sky with my knife for a trophy. Okay, so here these guys should be shooting flaming arrows. I need to try to knock one with a my, my knife, basically. Come on. Oh, here we go. Come on. Here we go. Ha. Swing and a miss. Ah, God. Time out. Pause. There. Ah. Batter up. Too slow. God, that hurts. Come on. Come on. Yeah! <laughs> there we go. After battling my way through like a billion werewolves, I fight the werewolf king basically, murder him for a trophy. How's that feel? Up yours! 
and get the last piece of rose. With all the pieces of rose in my possession, I use them to unlock this giant chalice that is used to power an elevator that leads to Heisenberg's factory. I make my way towards the factory and have a conversation with Heisenberg. He basically wants me to work with him to help kill Mother Miranda, and of course we refuse. He then proceeds to drop me down a hole, we escape a creature with a fan for its head, and we find ourselves in a giant underground factory. While here, I shoot off one of the monsters on a conveyor belt for another trophy. The factory itself is probably the hardest section of the game. It's filled with weird mechanical creatures and even a mini boss fight with old fan head. Eventually, I come across Chris Redfield, who built me a giant death cart that I'm supposed to use to fight Heisenberg. So that's exactly what I do. Go away, Heisenberg. Here we are. Oh, dude, that's so close to the special area. Are you dead yet? Are you, <clears throat> are you actually dead yet? Oh, there it is. There we go. Yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. It's time to kick your ass. There it is. Iron Giant down. <laughs> Goodbye, Heisenberg. Once Heisenberg was killed, Mother Miranda appears and shows us she's been impersonating other people this entire time, including our wife, Mia. She then rips out Ethan's heart, which is super metal, by the way, and Ethan dies. Now we are playing as Chris Redfield, and our goal is to destroy the giant mutamycete that's infecting the village. Chris's part of the game is actually pretty cool, because at this point, you're just murdering everything in your path. After basically killing every werewolf that exists, we make our way to the giant mutamycete and arm it with explosives. Now, at this point in the game, we are cleaning up all the collectibles. We shoot the last bobblehead for a trophy. Bobblehead thing we need here as well. And there it is, heretic. We got all the little goat bobbleheads. Boom. And we read all the files in the game for another trophy. There it is. Bookworm. All the files. My Resident Evil tradition of missing one file ends. <laughs> We then find out that the real Mia is still alive and that Ethan is also still alive because apparently he died in the last game and now it's just made up of mutamycete goo. With Ethan back in action, it was time for the final boss fight against Miranda. Now, since I didn't upgrade any of my weapons at all to save money, this fight felt like it took forever. Eventually, Miranda dies and Ethan, Chris, and Rose need to escape the village in a helicopter that's waiting for them. Ethan stays behind and sacrifices himself to destroy the Munamycete once and for all, while Chris, Mia, and Rose escape in a helicopter in classic Resident Evil fashion. The first playthrough is done. So we got the trophy for Great Dad, which is beat the game on at least casual difficulty best dad for at least standard difficulty and there we go our first playthrough is done most of the miscellaneous trophies are done still some i need to do but now i want to do the dlc so i haven't played it should be fun i'm excited so next up was the Shadow of Rose DLC. This was my first time playing it and I really enjoyed it. Now I'm not going to show too much of it in this video because I only need to beat the game on the hardest difficulty for the DLC trophies. I do want to, however, shout out this part with this mannequin that chases after you when you stop looking at it. This was one of the creepiest things I have ever played in a Resident Evil game and it made me jump quite a few times. Ah! Jesus! Oh my god! Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god, I almost- I- Oh my god, I had a heart attack right there. Oh. But anyways, like I said, I really enjoyed the DLC, and after beating it on the hardest difficulty, I got these trophies. 
Green Teen. So we beat the game on casual. That's for being the game on normal or the DLC, I should say. And there's for being the DLC on hardcore difficulty. Now it was time for step two for the platinum trophy. For this playthrough, we're gonna play through the whole game using the knife only, spend less than 10,000 lei in the shop, heal less than four times, and beat the game under three hours. It sounds like a daunting task, but really it's not too bad. I put the game on the easiest difficulty, bought a really strong knife called the Karambit knife from the in-game bonus shop, and slashed my way through this playthrough. Since I just played through the game as well, I knew it inside and out. So I made it to the end boss way under three hours. After slicing and dicing the final boss, it was time to unlock all four of those trophies, except one of them didn't unlock. All right, so we got Dashing Dad. Finishing the story within three hours. Don't trust that snake oil. Finish the story using four or less recovery items. Frugal Father, finish the story without spending more than 10,000 lei. Wait, I didn't get the knife one? Oh no, somewhere I missed the knife. So it turns out the trophy for using my knife only didn't unlock because I'm a big dummy and used this explosive device during this crisp boss fight, which negated the trophy. And since I'm also really dumb, I saved over that part, which meant I couldn't just reload an earlier save and fix it. I had to do a knife playthrough all over again. I was so upset with myself, but I figured while I'm doing this knife run again, I'll get a few miscellaneous trophies along the way. All right, well, if I'm gonna have to replay this game again, I'm gonna kill this big guy. Get this trophy. Come here. Just let it happen. Let it happen. There we go. Timber! Well, I gotta play through the game again with a knife only. I'm so annoyed, but at least we got that one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe I have to do this all over again. Ugh. All right, so I'm gonna go for a trophy here where I have to kill this big giant alpha beast that spawns. He only spawns after you kill the fish boss, Monroe, so let's kill this you real quick with a knife. Oh, okay, we're off to a great start. Just let it happen. Let it happen. I'm gonna stab you in the butt. In the butt. Some butt stabs. Just let it happen, beast. I need this trophy. Oh my god. He's knocking me down. We're gonna do it, though. I'm gonna do it with the knife. I don't even care. There it is. Leader of the pack. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Uh. And now I gotta stab her. I'm pretty sure. Let's just stab her to death. This should be it. This should be it. Here we go. All right, let's see if I got the trophy. Please. Please. <laughs> I don't wanna play through this game again. <laughs> With my knife. While the story's done. Knives out. All right, there it is. I had to play for another two hours and 11 minutes. I can't believe I messed that up the first time. I cannot believe it, but at least it's done now. Oh my gosh. I'm so dumb. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Now it was time for step three, which is to play on the hardest difficulty and clean up any remaining miscellaneous trophies. Now, the hardest difficulty actually wasn't too bad for me since I unlocked for myself the Magnum with unlimited ammo. With the Magnum equipped, this difficulty was a breeze. I do really enjoy this difficulty though because enemy spawns are different, so you'll run into an area and be completely surprised by new enemy types, which really keeps you on your toes. Eventually though, we beat the game again and unlock the trophy. While the story is done, world's best dad. That's for beating the story on least hardcore difficulty. And we got the universe's best dad. So we finished it on Village of Shadows difficulty. 
in under three hours. I got this game down, guys. I played this game so many times at this point. <laughs> I probably, I've probably played Resident Evil 8 more than any other Resident Evil game at this point in my life. Now it was time to clean up all the miscellaneous trophies. Luckily, I kept a lot of saves in different spots in the game, so I used those to get all of these real quick. The first was for upgrading every gun with all their weapon parts. Then I went back to an old area to set an enemy on fire real quick. Okay, so we're gonna go for a trophy here where there's gonna be an enemy that spawns. And I'm gonna need to basically set him on fire with this fire right here. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. It's like right here this is the enemy. Just need to shoot this fire at him. There we go. Medium rare. I then bought every crafting recipe and crafted each recipe at again. least once. For the last miscellaneous trophy, I had to try to get a total of 777 lei at once. Now, this took a bit of math and some selling items back and forth, but eventually I got it. There we go. Lucky number seven. Oh my god, I had to use my brain and do math. Holy crap, man. I'm not trying to do math right now, it's almost one in the morning. <laughs> okay. Well, we did it. Cool. 777 lay for lucky number seven trophy. Okay, with all of that out of the way, it was time for step four. The hardest part of the platinum trophy, according to most people, which is mercenaries mode. Is it really as hard as people say? To be honest, not really. For mercenaries, you have to get an S rating on every map in this mode, which basically means you need to move really fast to kill enemies and rack up your combo meter. Now, I do want to clarify, for this Platinum, I did use the DLC characters for this mode, which honestly, I feel does make it a little bit easier. I did get this achievement a couple months back on my Steam profile before the DLC was out, and it was definitely more challenging then, but even still, it wasn't too bad for me personally. I wish I could make this sound more exciting than it was, but I pretty much just got an S rating on every map my first try. Sometimes I even got a triple S, surprisingly. This game mode though is really fun and I had a blast playing as new characters. Chris Redfield's handgun and punch abilities absolutely rule. And Lady D just goes around choke slamming people while sending out flies. Come on slam. And welcome to the channel. I absolutely recommend playing this mode with the DLC characters. I should also mention there are two new maps with the DLC, and I played both of those to get the last DLC trophies. Village of Blood. Oh, I got triple S. <clears throat> Complete the bloody village in additional orders. River of Blood. So we completed the Bloody River in additional orders. But yeah, like I said, I pretty much breezed through this and I had a great time, which eventually led me to the trophy. Legendary Cowboy! Triple S! Yes! Man, this is so much more fun with DLC characters. I did this before on Steam. And it was before there was a DLC. The DLC makes it definitely easier, but it's way more fun to have multiple characters. Okay, so I think for the Platinum, all I need to do is two very simple trophies. I just need to view all the character and weapon models and view all concept art. Actually, look, concept art is pretty sweet, all jokes aside. Like, it is pretty cool that they add this, because this is, like, something that I, as a Resident Evil nerd, am actually all about. Okay, it should be the last row, hopefully. Art collector. So we gotta do the same thing here with the figurines, I think. And there we go. Doll collector. Which means... The Platinum. Ethan Winters. Obtain all trophies. Resident Evil 8 Platinum. Done. Ooh, there it is guys, the Platinum Trophy for Resident Evil Village. 
This is the second time I've gotten all the trophies slash achievements for this game. I absolutely love Resident Evil, and I was super happy to play this game again. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this, and check out this video right here.